you walk into an electronics store, rows of televisions, stretching wall to wall like digital windows into someone else's life. A car commercial crashes in 4K, an action scene, explosions and sweat spills across 98 inches. Samsung, Sony, LG, each screen brighter than the last. The sales rep smiles politely and starts his pitch. You want mini LED, he insists. Brighter, he adds. Safer, future-proof. You nod, but in the back of your mind, you're still wondering why OLED, the crown jewel for years, suddenly feels like a fading memory. Then the whisper becomes a murmur. Posts, threads, comparisons. Is OLED dying? Did I buy the wrong one? It starts to sink in. This year feels different because every year, homes get smarter, TVs get thinner, brighter, richer, but the decisions, they get harder. And the irony, we were never choosing between good and bad, but between truth and presentation. OLED was once the gold standard, the closest thing we had to cinematic truth in your living room. No backlighting cheats, no bloated contrast, just pure blacks, pixel perfect shadows, a breath of fire flickering in a blacked out room without a single halo. It was never loud about its strengths. That's not how OLED worked. It whispered quality to those who knew how to look. But brightness? Brightness begs for attention. Brightness is easy to sell, even easier to fake. So somewhere along the way, the language changed. 600 nits, 1800, 3000. Mini LED became the headline and OLED became a cautionary tale. Careful, it might burn in. Mini LED is safer. It's new, it's better, it's now. But behind the marketing noise is a quieter, more complicated truth. There's a reason OLED costs more to make. A reason videographers, DPs, and designers use it professionally because it's still the closest thing we have to real. Even today, there's this moment every Saturday. You make coffee before anyone else wakes up, just you. The hum of the grinder, the pour over steam. You sit on the couch. Your daughter's stuffed rabbit fell under the stand last week. It's still there. And episode five of that show, you saved all month plays in grayscale silence. It's not the volume that impresses, it's the detail. There's a window in the corner of a scene, filtered light cutting through fabric blinds. And as you lean in, something clicks. You don't want more brightness, you want more presence. But that's not the story consumers are being told. Because in tech, confusion is profit. Mini LED is easier to scale, cheaper to manufacture easier to ship. You can go bigger. You can go brighter. You can buy more. And that's the game, the illusion of value over the experience of truth. So now, companies that once swore by OLED are pivoting. Even Sony, once the purest answer, now sells flagship mini LEDs, not because they're better, but because they sell faster. Because what looks impressive in a bright retail store doesn't always make sense once the lights are off. But here's something they won't tell you on the showroom floor. Mini LED will bloom in total darkness. It looks amazing until a candle flickers across pitch black and you see that glowing cloud start to spread around it. OLED doesn't make scenes look louder. It makes them look honest. It's bad for hype, but perfect for art. And yet, honesty doesn't trend well on TikTok. So now we're watching a quiet shift in the market. Not a death, not a failure, just... Silence where once there was conversation, OLED isn't dying. It's just being ignored. There's no strong TikTok angle for micro contrast. No viral tweet for true blacks. Just people who know the difference and people who don't. That's the big divide now, not tech specs, but vision. And if you're here, listening, you're probably in the first group. 
The OLED user doesn't chase brightness. They chase immersion. They crave stillness. They care that when light breaks through shadow, it tells the truth. They're not loud. They don't brag, but they see. There's another detail, one most people miss. Television isn't just a product. It's furniture for your attention. It sits in your living room for seven years, right where your baby will take her first step, right where your partner will cry during a movie you'll never forget, right where the nightlight from the hallway reflects faintly on the black mat frame. No algorithm accounts for that. No comparison chart shows you how OLED feels after the 100th hour when the speakers are off and you're just watching light perform silently in the dark. But those are the real moments, the ones no salesperson can rehearse, the ones mini LED doesn't quite earn. Because this push toward brightness, it isn't accidental. It's not really about image quality, it's about control. Control of the conversation, control of us. The brighter it gets, the more cutting edge it looks. In a store, in an ad, on a spec sheet. But when was the last time you watched a film at 3000 nits? You don't. You dim the lights. You lie back on that old, slightly sinking sofa, and maybe your dog jumps next to you, tail wagging, then resting, just in time for the opening scene. You reach for the remote, and suddenly, you don't want brightness, you want intimacy. A story told in shadow, in subtle gradients, in silence. OLED gives you that. Not because it's trendy, but because it knows when not to shout. You'd think brands would protect that, celebrate it. But there's a reason you're seeing less oled in ads, in stores, in recommendation engines because it's harder to sell transparency, harder to profit from nuance. OLED panels are fragile to make. They take longer, cost more, and yield less inventory per production line. Mini LED? It's just stacked LCD, mass producible, efficient, flexible, no intention, but great returns. So marketing stepped in, shifted the lens, brighter, cheered better, Powerful contrast, newer technology. If enough people repeat something long enough, it becomes true. But what they don't say loud enough is this. Every TV has its truth. OLEDs is just quieter. It's not a specs war anymore. It's a psychology play. Welcome to the age where perceived innovation wins over actual craftsmanship, where algorithms echo branding and branding echoes back what algorithms already fed us. A loop, one that slowly eroded OLED's narrative. Not because it got worse, but because someone wanted you to stop looking. Now ask yourself this, why do brands push brightness so hard? Because brightness is what you feel immediately. It's a wow in three seconds. It's showroom serotonin. But micro contrast, that takes patience. A still frame, a dark room, an educated eye, that's not easy to monetize. So the conversation got rewritten, omitting words like true black, pixel level contrast, cinematic purity, all replaced with one, brightness. And like moths, we fluttered toward it. But there's something those of us who've lived with OLED know, you can't unsee it. Once you've had your screen go fully black, not gray, once you've watched lightning crack across a midnight lake without a single aura bleeding its edge, you can never go back. Brand reps might mock it, reviewers might skip it, but deep down, you know, they saw it too. Right now, in 2025, OLED isn't dead, it's just inconvenient. Inconvenient for margins, inconvenient for volume. Inconvenient for narratives trying to sell new over right, but in creative studios, it lives. In color grading bays, it lives. In the homes of people who watch films, not videos, it breathes. Even if no one talks about it, even if the store down the road no longer stocks it, 
because at the end of the day, anyone can sell color. Few can preserve it. And that's what OLED was built for, not just to display life, but to honor it. So the next time someone says, why'd you buy OLED? Tell them it's not about bragging rights. Tell them it's not about burning in or brightness or Black Friday bundles. Tell them it's about stillness, about seeing the scene the way the filmmaker framed it, the way the night was meant to look, the way shadow curves and fades without getting crushed or bloated or lit from behind like a billboard. You don't need OLED to watch TV, but if stories matter to you, if you're the kind of person who gets lost in small details, then you already know why you chose it. So let them talk. Let the brands make their pivot. Let the brags get louder. Because under it all, behind the marketing, OLED remains. Not louder, not brighter, just better. The story isn't over. Sometimes surviving quietly is more noble than dominating loudly. And right now, in the dark, OLED waits, not for the spotlight, but for those who see through it. They want one that's smart enough to work. Before you go, hit that subscribe button. We don't just review, we expose from the hype to the hidden failures to the tricks brands hope you'll never question. So hit like, tap subscribe, and join thousands of viewers who already know. Smart spending starts with asking smarter questions.